everyone, it's Ella from Delicious Ella, and I'm live on the Holland Barrett Facebook page and we're going to be cooking a really, really easy dinner for you guys tonight. So it's hopefully it's great inspiration. It should take about 15 minutes and it's a sesame and aubergine noodle bowl with garlic, aubergines obviously, mushrooms, broccoli, lemon, edamame, pomegranate, sesame, it's super delicious. So the first thing we're going to do just to get started is we're going to toast our cashews. So we're just going to put them, my pan's on, and I'm just going to put them in here and leave them for a couple of minutes. So if anyone's just tuning in now, it's Ella from Delicious Ella, and I'm showing you how to make a super easy 15-minute supper, a sesame and aubergine noodle bowl. It's vegan, it's super easy. And the really good news is you can ask all your comments, all your queries, all your questions, and our favorite query or question is going to win this prize here because we've just launched our new um, Birch and Moosey and original granola into Holland and Barra and Holland and Barra Online, which I'm super excited about, as well as our two new flavors of energy balls. So our um, blueberry and almond protein ball and our cacao and oat energy ball, which doesn't have nuts in. And that's to join our other energy balls, which we already had here, the cacao and almonds, the Holland and Barra's favorite, and then the cashew and ginger and the hazelnut and raisin. So ask your comments, ask your queries, and our favorite one's gonna win this box here and um, otherwise yeah you can find them online now which is very exciting and they're all vegan friendly and gluten free as well the birch is my favorite just mix it with a bit of almond milk and maybe a bit of coconut yogurt let it sit for a minute or two it's so creamy and delicious so i'm going to just whack my heat up here and we just go all we do to start with is just oh i left these a little bit too long they're browning okay we'll take these off so i'm just going to put my cashews to one side and now we're gonna start making the main dish. So I've chopped up a little bit of garlic here because I know chopping garlic isn't that interesting if we're totally honest. And so we're gonna start by just adding a little bit of olive oil. So you want a large frying pan or a wok. So I've got a wok here, which is brilliant. And I'm just gonna put my garlic into the pan. Oh, do you hear the sizzle? Okay, I'm gonna turn that down a bit. And you can see that frying up nicely here. And then with that, I'm gonna add a bit of salt and some pepper. Oh wow, this pan is hot, hot, hot. Okay, and then we're gonna add a little bit of sesame oil and a little bit of tamari, which is, if you haven't used it before, it's a gluten-free soy sauce, but you could use soy sauce as well. Oh yeah, look at that. Um, it's really bubbling away. It's amazing. Oh, it's starting to smell good. So that's really the basis of our supper tonight. And um, it smells really rich. Perfect base for a stir fry. Now, if you like things spicy at this moment, add some chili flakes too. So now we're going to add our veg. So we're just going to chop broccoli. So I've chopped some already because I know it's not that interesting to watch. But we're just going to chop it into bite-sized pieces. So something about this big or so. And we're gonna put this into our pan with some bite-sized aubergine. And we're gonna get that frying away with our garlic and our sesame. And again, if anyone's tuning in now, I'm Ella from Delicious Yella and we're making a super easy 15 minute supper, which is a sauteed sesame and aubergine bowl. Um, and now, once we've got that going, oh, it's smelling so good, guys. It's so great. And if you have other veg in the house and you want to use those up, this is a perfect recipe for that as well. So things like roasted, roasted red peppers would be great in here, corn, mange too. So it's a really nice way as well of kind of stopping food waste or just doing things when you don't have much time or don't feel as creative. So then our other thing we're just going to add to this to cook is some sliced mushrooms. And again, you can use any kind of mushrooms you've got. I just got just some simple button mushrooms, but like portobello mushrooms would be amazing or another time of year, wild mushrooms would be amazing in here. Um, it's a really nice way of getting quite a lot of your five a day as well. We've got three veggies in here and we're also gonna add edamame later and pomegranates. And the pomegranates just adds such a nice color. So I'm gonna let this cook away. And my next thing that I'm gonna do is just make my noodles. So I think that pan might be a little bit hot. So I'm just gonna get out some almond gloves. And I've just been boiling a bit of water here. And into that, I'm gonna put, so these are just some buckwheat noodles. Um, but again, you can use any noodles that you've got at home. 
And you just want to pop those into your pan. I might actually need to grab a little bit more water because it's been boiling for a bit too long now. We've got some very beautifully presented lemon water here that we'll use. And then you just want to stir those in. It's always so hard to get noodles into a pan, I find. Perfect. And these, yeah, as I said, they just take kind of five minutes to cook. So it's perfect timing with your veg. Basically, by the time your veg has finished cooking, your noodles will be ready. And you can add it all together. Okay, my noodles are nearly there. So while this cooks, I thought this would be the perfect time to answer as many of your questions as possible. So if you haven't answered any yet, now's the time. Ask them away. And as I said at the beginning, the winner is going to win this hamper back there of all our products as well. So do we have any questions? We do. So we have a question here from Lindsay Wood. So she says, hi, where do I start? What does a typical day look like on a plant-based diet? Okay. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? Um, thanks for tuning in. You know, look, it's all about making it work for you. And I say to anyone, oh, that is very hot, with the way that they cook, it's very, very important that you do it in a way that feels enjoyable because ultimately for anything to be sustainable, it's got to be enjoyable. For me, like I, for breakfast, I'm quite simple. I'm normally quite quick in the morning. So I normally have our granola, which is just oats, almonds, raisins, coconut chips. It's very simple. And I'll have that with a bit of um, almond milk or coconut yogurt and then some stewed berries. Or I'll make some porridge with banana and peanut butter or I'll do our birch and muesli with some fruit. So quite quick in the mornings. Or you can do like peanut butter toast and things like that. For lunch, I love making big batches of curries and stews during the week. And then um, I'll take the leftovers into lunch with me. So like a big, I'll saute mustard seeds and cumin seeds and then add um, uh, coconut milk and cook my veg in there and potatoes and things like that. So that's amazing. You make big batches, take that into work. And then for supper, I often do things like this. It's just 15 minutes or so, but um, I guess in terms of staples, beans are great, they're inexpensive, they're delicious. And then I try and do as much kind of seasonal fruit and veg as possible. So we've got another question here from Sarah Chadwick who says, if you could cook a plant-based meal for anybody, what um, would it be and who would it be for? Oh my gosh, everyone always asks me who I cook it for and I don't know. <laughs> I once said I'd be like, I'd cook it for all my old um, crushes like Enrique and Glazius and Blue. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure I would do that. What would I cook? I love Indian food. I just touched my microphone. That's probably not going to make the right noise. I love Indian food, it's my favorite, and they're amazing for plant-based food because it's got so much flavor, so much spice, it's so rich. So I make, might make like a big aloe gobi um, and a big chana masala with chickpeas and then a coconut rice and then crumble. I know that doesn't go, but I love crumble. So saute apples um, with cinnamon and ginger and a little bit of nutmeg and then cook that with an oat and almond topping with maple and a bit more cinnamon and it's just so good. So we've got another question from uh, Natalie Payne. So she says, I'm, I'm 20 years old and learning so much from Ella about healthy eating and a healthy lifestyle. Question, Ella, how old were you when you started the Deliciously Ella lifestyle? Um, hi, Natalie. Um, thank you. You're so kind. I started, well, it was quite a long story. I started doing what I do because I wasn't very well and I was really struggling with that. And I was um, about 20 or so. So, uh, yeah, about six and a half years ago now. And um, it's been an amazing journey. And I thought healthy food and plant-based food would be the most boring thing on earth. And I've suddenly realized, like, if you add sesame seeds and sesame oil and tamari and garlic and fry it all up and add pomegranates and toasted cashews and everything, there's so much flavor. And it can be one of the most delicious things you've ever had. So I've got another question here from Olivia Thompson. She okay. says, where do you get your cooking inspiration from? Favorite chefs or bloggers? Question mark. The recipe sounds amazing. Um, so, hi, Olivia. Um, uh, in terms of blogs, there's two blogs which are just so beautiful. If you've not seen them, go online, look up them now. My New Roots, she's stunning. She's from Canada, and her recipes are beautiful, but her photography is beautiful, so I'm always inspired by that. And then Green Kitchen Stories, they're a family from Sweden, and their kids are also so cute, so it's fun to follow, but their food's amazing. 
Um, and then chefs, I think Anna Jones is amazing. She's a vegetarian chef. She's really brilliant. I definitely have a look at her. She writes an amazing column in The Guardian, and her food's incredible. We've got another Olivia asking a utensil-based question now. Okay. So, uh, would love to know what your favourite cooking utensil is. Mine's definitely a spatula. It can be used for so many purposes. Oh, I love that. I love a good spatula. Um, mine is, well, I guess it's probably not a utensil. I do quite like something like a food processor because I do find it gives you amazing flexibility. So I'll make hummus in there. I'll make energy balls in there. I'll make homemade almond butter and things like that, which is just quite fun. It gives me quite a lot of kind of creative license. And you can take something really simple like an aubergine and make it into like a smoky aubergine dip with tahini. And it sounds so fancy, but it's so easy. So I'm quickly going to drain my noodles. So they're done now. And then I'm going to stir them into our stir fry. So I'm just going to take them to the sink. OK. So we have noodles. So I'm going to stir our noodles in with our veg now. So you can see this really is a super, super, super easy dinner. And now at this point you can add a little bit more sesame oil, a little bit more tamari as well if you want to intensify the flavours. I always love that. I'm also going to add our edamame beans. Um, sometimes if you use frozen ones you can just chuck them in with the, because um, they're often easier to find frozen, you can just chuck them in with the noodles for the last minute or so. Um, but mine weren't frozen. How yummy is this looking? It's so fresh and it's just smelling amazing. And then the next thing that we're going to add is some sesame seeds, which I love and then they look, they always look really nice. I feel like they make it look really fancy, even when it's not necessarily. And then we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice as well. I love lemon. I find it's such an easy way to add flavour to anything. If you're not such a lemon person, then you can skip this step as well. And I think that's so important when you're cooking, especially if it's a little bit different to what you've cooked before, to just adjust it and do what you enjoy doing. Okay, so we've got our lemon. Got all our veggies. And now we're pretty much ready to go. So when I serve it, I'm going to serve it with the pomegranates. And I'm going to keep a couple of my cashews back just to add on the top to make it look nice. But stir the rest in at this point. And here we go. Okay, so this is our final, final dish. I'm going to turn our heat off. And I'm going to just prepare a plate to show you guys. And as, yeah, as you can see, this is the simplest, speediest dinner. So it's perfect if you get home from work late. And as I said, you can adjust. Oh, this is very small little portions we're getting at a time you can adjust it completely to make it work for you so if you've got different veggies in the fridge like cauliflower would be amazing and here there's so many things that would taste so 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 good so don't feel like you've got to completely stick to a recipe and the other thing that can be amazing as well if you want to just make it a little bit richer is to stir in a spoonful of cashew butter or almond butter or peanut butter at the end. It's really, really yummy. Or a little bit of tahini as well if you don't, if you're a bit allergic to nuts. I think my spatula is a bit small, so I'm going to go with my spoon to scoop out the last bits. Perfect. So here is our plate. And then over the top, I'm just going to add a few pomegranate seeds, add a little bit of sweetness to the meal, and then a few extra sesame seeds, just because they look gorgeous. And then a couple of our cashews so that you know you've got some at the top. And that's it. And so it really is like 15 minutes, so easy. Nice way to get some veggies into your life. And does anyone have any other final questions? We do. So we've got okay. a question from Karen Whedon. Okay. So she asks, uh, do you think flavour is one of the most important parts of cooking? And if so, what flavours are your favourite? Hi Karen, yeah, I think flavour is so important and I think often when people move to a kind of healthier diet or a plant-based diet, they're really nervous about missing flavour and I think for anything to be enjoyable, it's got to taste good. So 
if you're making those transitions, make sure it tastes good. That's the key for everything for me. When it comes to creating that flavor, I think herbs and spices are the ultimate place to start. Like just fry, and always, I always fry them off at the beginning. So if you fry garlic, onion, different you know, turmeric, paprika, cayenne pepper, mustard seeds, cumin seeds, anything like that. It just creates something really aromatic and then everything that you cook in with it is going to absorb some of those flavors. So which is just incredible and it's just such an easy way. You know, if you do that and then just add a can of chickpeas and a can of butter beans and a tin of tomatoes, super simple, but actually you end up with something that's so, so delicious. We've got another question here from Caitlin Baker. So she okay. says... Uh, hi Ella, I'd love to know what your quick fix is for a plant-based sweet treat in the evenings. Okay, plant-based sweet treat in the evenings. I have to admit I eat a lot of nut butter with a spoon out the jar. Um, or with dates dipped in, that's pretty good if you need something really quick. I eat a lot of energy balls. I always have a sash on hand. They're my favourite. The cacao and almond's amazing. It's just super easy and you can make them at home as well and they're really easy. Just six ingredients. Dates, almonds, almond butter, coconut oil, cacao powder and a pinch of salt. Um, if I'm being a bit more adventurous, I love doing a crumble and crumbles are great as well because you can make a big one You can freeze it, but it also lasts in the fridge like five six days So if I'm cooking for friends ever I'll do a big crumble and then keep it and it's amazing for breakfast as well with a bit of coconut yogurt And then we have another question from uh, Narling Jensen. So uh, they ask uh, What are your three go-to items you always have in the kitchen? Okay, three go-to items I always have in the kitchen a really good herb rack I think herbs and spices as I said are the key to everything and then I always have a blender because it allows you yeah, to be a bit creative what you do and blend up great sauces and dressings and things like that. And you can you know, make hummuses and I love hummus. And then the third thing is just a really, this is a bit of a cheating answer, but a really good cupboard of dry, cupboard of dry ingredients because I think that makes eating well when you get home and you're tired a lot easier. Like if you've got lentils and beans and chickpeas and rice and quinoa and coconut milk and tin tomatoes and all those kinds of things ready stocked, it's super easy to make a quick meal from them. And then we have uh, another question from Brody uh, Sandylands. So she asks, uh, what do you think the most versatile spice to use is? What's the most versatile spice to use? I think my go-tos are chili or cayenne pepper, paprika, turmeric and um, uh, mustard seeds. I just, those are my go-tos, they're my favorite. I find they add really rich flavor. But tamari, which we use in this recipe, is also amazing because it is really rich. So it does add a lot of flavor very easily and very quickly. So I think we move on to our favorite question. Okay, so we're gonna pick the favorite question now. Uh, what I is it? the first one. So okay. I really liked Lindsay Wood's question. So what does a typical day look like on a plant-based diet? Okay, amazing. So, Lindsay, you're the winner, and um, you're going to get this amazing hamper for the question, which was, what's your um, day on a plant-based diet, which was easy things like granola and moussey for breakfast, um, leftover always of curries, stews, dals for lunch, and then speedy 15-minute suppers like this, or an easy pasta for dinner. Brilliant. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And, um, yeah, you can find the recipe on com and um, our new products in Holland and Barrett. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye.